Hi everyone, this is Vivian. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create this watercolor blending effect with your brush markers. So I actually did a live stream on this technique and it was a very long video. So this will be a condensed version and the project I do here will be more complete than the one I did in the live stream. So today I'm going to use some watercolor paper. These are cold pressed and I also cut them into a smaller size. And you need to have a watercolor brush along with some water and also a paper towel. You can dab off the excess water from your brush. You can also use a water brush and then also some plastic surface for one of the techniques that we're going to be using. So I have three brands of brush marker today. The first one is King Art and the second one is Tombow. And I also have a Crayola markers. These are Crayola brush markers. So before we start the project, let me just quickly talk about color wheel. So this is a color wheel I create. You're probably familiar with it. So if you're blending colors, it's easier to go with neighboring color. So if you're blending from yellow to orange to red, it will be easier or green to you know, lime green. Those are easier blending. And when you're getting further away from you know, each other, your blending will be more challenging. Say if you want to go from yellow to uh, fuchsia, then you probably want to add a red in between. And also, if you are really going um, extreme from opposite side of the color wheel, you will probably want to take you know, a couple steps uh, detour to get from one color to the other instead of go straight from you know one color to the opposite in the color wheel. So let me show you just a few ways that you can blend colors using this technique. So here I'm drawing three boxes of pink and then um, also three boxes of green that I'm trying to blend these two colors. And the first way to do it is just to go straight from pink to green. I'm just adding color on both sides and then just you know see what happens when they meet. And as you can see, they start to create this muddy-ish gray color. And so sometimes it works out, but then a lot of time it just turns out to be grayish, you know, muddy. So I'm going to show you two other ways that you can blend opposite colors. So the first alternative way is to fade each color into almost transparent or fade them to transparent. So here I'm blending the pink into very, very light until it's almost gone. And then I will blend the green also the same by adding color and diluting it, make it until almost it's transparent. So they are not exactly blending, they are pretty much fading out and then just meeting right in the middle. But as you can see, you get a nice clean uh, in between color instead of that muddy grayish color like we did on the first time. So the third way to do it is to add a couple more colors in between. And if we look at this color wheel, we can add maybe a purple and then a teal in between. So uh, the pink doesn't go directly jumping into a forest green, but there's like kind of a, you know, a detour to go from pink to green. And as you can see, this way of blending is more clear. Uh, you don't get that dirty-ish, you know, muddy gray in between. You actually get a more smooth and vibrant transition. So the first method we're going to use is to scribble on a plastic surface or non-porous surface. And then you pick up with a brush to, you know, bottle the color. And this method is very nice uh, in a way that it doesn't ruin your brush tip because you're drawing on a smooth surface. So you can use this method to um, borrow the color from your new brush marker. So I have laid down some blue and pink and also into yellow and red. And I'm just going to use a watercolor brush to pick up the colors and add water and then to create a nice um, pastelish transparent uh, gradient. So this method is very nice if you want to create a more uh, subtle background, um, but you will never get a very vibrant background. And since we're working on watercolor paper, you can usually go back with more water to create a more uh, smooth transition if you feel like the blending is not quite there. And then after it's dried, I'm going to use a water brush to pick up some of the paint. This technique is called lifting, so I'm actually lifting up the paint from the paper to create kind of a cloud effect. 
and then I'm just going to draw a simple um, telephone poles uh, down at the bottom to, and then some birds to make it just look like a sky you know, scenery instead of just a uh, plain color. So this is one way to create a very cute bookmark or gift tag or even just you know some little art that you can uh, put on your wall, give to someone, however you, know, you want to use it for. So the second method I'm going to show you, we're actually going to draw on the watercolor paper. So you might not want to use this technique on a brand new favorite marker, but I have a lot of markers that are old and the tips are already frailed. So um, it's okay that I just use it on this you know, harsh paper. So I'm going to draw directly on the paper and uh, I'm choosing colors that are nicely transitioned to one another. So here I have the orange and then kind of like a peach and then to a pink. So I'm going to create a sunset kind of sky and the bottom quarter I'm going to use green because I want to draw some sort of green forest scenery on this one. So here I'm using a black marker to draw trees and to create kind of like a forest view so it's a really good exercise for your imagination, I would say. And for this one, I'm using a very dark, almost grayish purple, and then to a deep purple to a blue. I want to create a night nice sky, and I'm pretty much just gonna leave it in these three colors and then have it fade all the way to white. And you can see sometimes when you blend the color, um, you get this kind of like a bleeding effect. So if you don't like that, just you know, go over it with more water to smooth it out. And I'm just going to uh, use another black marker to draw some trees. So this will be another forest view, but it's from a uh, far away. And then I also use a white gel marker to draw a star, a shiny bright star, and then some shooting star. Um, just randomly dotted around to create like a nice sky view. And then since I have all the space at the bottom, I'm going to write um, something. Here I wrote um, O Star of Wonder, O Star of Night. So on the last one, I'm going to draw another night nice sky, I think, but this time I'm using green and teal color. It's not a usual sky color maybe, but since it's a painting, it can be a little more, um, you know, exaggerated. So I'm fading out the green sky and I'm going to add on um, an orange or a light orange at the bottom. So it's still kind of resemble a sunset, I think. And for this one, I'm going to draw a city escape. So the, I'm just drawing random buildings of, you know, like uh, matchbox buildings. So at one point, I wanted to have some cloud on the sky. 
but it doesn't turn out quite right. And since this is water color paper, so I can just add some water and um, kind of you know remove the cloud that I drew. I changed my mind. So as you can see, this is a very forgiving project, and it's very simple. So you can definitely uh, do a much better job than I have here. So lastly, I'm going to use the same white gel pen to draw some windows and just window lights and dot in the stars in the sky. So these are a few very simple projects and very cute projects you can do with your brush marker. So if you make them bigger, they can be a greeting card. If you make them smaller, they can be a gift tag or a bookmark. It's uh, really whatever you want them to be. So I love to see what you do with these techniques. If you are on Instagram, don't forget to come hang out with me. I am at Purple Martin Lettering. I would love to see what you come up with. And if you like this video and find it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Bye.